We got a double episode premiere. I hope you enjoyed this one. This is still another game, my ladies. We will announce Boone episode 422 or 423. Even though it's strictly filler, but hmm, I'll talk about it. All right. Uh, first of all, you got uh, it's th this episode mainly it's about Konohamaru. It's about what Konohamaru did when after Naruto came back and. Like, in the beginning, it was about how Noramaru, he was cleaning Naruto's room, looking after his stuff, looking after his home, while Naruto was away for the for the two years he spent with Jiraiya. Uh, however, I do remember in the original Shibuden, like, in the first anime, Naruto's home was rather dusty and unclean. Yeah, I remember that. His apartment was dirty. Now, I, don't, I think they're just doing this for fan service. I mean, I mean just to buy a little time. I mean, we're close to the end, right? And so I understand the concern, and but as a fan, you got you got to admit that's an obvious bluff. But let's get to the point. The whole thing, this whole whole two episode was about how not Naruto came back, but how Konohama was trying to improve himself, you know, so he could keep up with Naruto because he thinks of him as his rival. Uh, and I, I like so much how Konohama looks up to Naruto, and he reminds me of Naruto so much. Any Naruto fan knows that Konohama is a lot like Naruto is. I mean, Naruto wants to be Hokage, Konohamaru wants to be Hokage, and they both, and they both have, and they both descended from Hokage bloodline, technically. I mean, Naruto's father, Minato, was the fourth, and Konohamaru's grandfather, Sarutobi, he was the, he was the third, and he, he wanted to be great. Hey, I like that, how this, I like that these two episodes, you know, even though, even though a lot of people don't like filler, I kind of like this a little bit, because it's like, kind of like, more filler after what happened with the whole shooting exam thing, thing but it, but we get the point. Hey, like the first episode, like basically, it's trying to teach. Hey, like Konohamaru, he wants like Naruto. He's trying to teach Komohamaru things, like for example, trying to teach him some jutsu. Like uh, I mean, Naruto's definitely improves over the first two years when it comes to him in c controlling his jutsu, and the jutsu he's trying to teach him is the Rasengan. Now uh, you know how to you know, first rotations. First is uh, this uh, speed, rotation, and power, and uh, chop and control, like stuff like. But the thing is, he's doing the same method as how Jiraiya uh, taught him. You know, no, you know, he's leaving him alone, t telling him the stages, leaving him alone. But the thing is, Naruto, he's not very clear when it comes to him. You know how Naruto can be a bit brash and impulsive and likes to say random things to say weird stuff. You know, kind of like that. Yeah, but that's how Naruto is. Hey, yeah, Naruto's always been like that, you know. Like, he's always been that kind of person. Even though he does give Komo, he, he does leave him alone the same way that Jiraiya does. Uh, in the first half of Naruto. I know I gotta admit, Jiraiya, even though he taught Naruto the Rastengan, he wasn't exactly what you call an ideal father figure. Yeah, he's supposed to be his godfather, his godfather, his, grand, his surrogate grandparent. Yeah, but... Because of his pervy nature and certain irresponsibility, even though he was one of the greatest ninja, he did have his flaws. Uh, so that, yeah. Even though Konohamaru, he does struggle a little bit. And I kind of, I mean, I kind of like how in Konohamaru, he tries his own way to try to figure out the Rasengan. Um, but the thing is, he does it in such a comedic, funny way that it just makes you laugh. Yeah. The thing is, Konohamaru is still a kid. He doesn't understand. Yeah, unless you explain him in certain detail, then he won't get it right. Hey, like how Naruto didn't get it. Hey, but then again, Naruto's always been a bit of a simpleton in a way. Even though he's one of the baddest ninjas around, he's he's a bit simple minded. And that part you got you gotta understand, he's always been a bit dense. And I like and Konohamaru, he does it in the way he keeps combining the way, for example, he he, he goes to his sensei for advice, like Ibisu, who's a, 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 who in the anime dub is voiced by Crispin Freeman, who also voices Itachi, who is a major badass. Yes, but you have to understand, and Yibisu, he, he is his sensei, yeah, but the thing is, Naruto, oh, like, the thing is, he, yeah, Konohamaru's been teaching Naruto, Konohamaru's been understanding Naruto's methods, he wants to do things his own way, the thing is, the way he does it is a bit, you know, foolhardy, he keeps trying to understand how, what Naruto's saying, trying to understand the jutsu, but he does it in such a pervy way, like, Keeps trying to do things, but you, he thinks that by using the sexy jutsu, you know, using perverted ways, basically, he like he's trying to understand what Naruto means. He thinks everything is all about combining the Rasengan with sexy jutsu, but that's not how you do things. 
It's like it's like he's trying his hardest. All right, he wants to understand how the juice works, yeah, but the thing is, it's not exactly easy for him, and he's trying to understand things in his own way. He's trying to clear the 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 here the here the basic steps. But if you don't explain to him in detail, then he'll get confused and he'll get off track. But he's determined, and that's one of the things I like about Konohamaru. He wants to keep up with Naruto because he sees Naruto as his rival, oh, like and and also a big brother. So you have to understand the meaning behind this. This this is like very. This is a very nostalgic. If you guys are a Naruto fan, you guys watch the beginning of Naruto, or how Naruto was always a goofy kid. And he's still a bit of a, he's still goofy, but in the kid, and you gotta understand how this makes you feel. As a Naruto fan, you understand how it is. Hey, how Komohamaru wants to compete. Doesn't that remind you how Naruto competed with Sasuke? Because he was Mr. Perfect, and he excelled at everything. And, but you, and, but that's like, but you understand. But that's the first episode. Now there's the second episode. Uh, everything he's still trying to strive for it, and he does improve a little over time. Fine, but then things start to take their t hardest, and he starts to train even harder after Naruto. So you know, coming back from missions after mission, and then and still accelerating forward, and and they're skipping certain story angles, like they're like accelerating time a little bit. Like whether Naruto has some free time between certain missions, and he like between you know like the gaps between the story. He trains Konohamaru and he sells him certain tips. Although it does take Toronto certain times. Like, for example, this these fillers between certain between the middle of certain canon stories, like when Naruto came back, he re he went to the hidden stand to rescue to try to find Gara and to rescue Gara from the Akatsuki, when they went after Sasuke, and trying to find the spy for Orochimaru. Like between that. And this is and, and and it's like very good, but the thing is sometimes it's gonna be a bit goofy. I liked how all the senseis you got Ebisu, Iruka, Yamato, and Yamato's not even a teacher, the captain, like Kakashi, they're all freaking out and how Konaru can be a bit, you know, impulsive, especially when he transforms into his Combine is sexy due to and he get, and he's so impulsive he doesn't realize that when he does all this impulsive stuff in a woman's body it can be a bit embarrassing and very hilarious and can make men very very <laughs> hilarious and excited but you have to I, there's even one site even when a guy is staring at Kora Haru when he does the sexy jutsu his girlfriend's us out and and he's blushing and the girl's like what the hell are you th looking at like I'm right here <laughs> yeah but that's the, but. Enough about me giving away certain details, but you, but you understand. It's very. This episode does make a lot of sense in certain in certain ways. Like Komohamaru, he wants to become strong, and so does Naruto. Like, like he looks up to Naruto as as has his idol, basically. He yeah, as Naruto, he progresses forward, going through all harder training. I mean, it took especially when he was doing the training for the Rasen Shuriken, and him trying to keep moving forward, him him trying to move out and. How, like, he wants to follow in Naruto's footsteps. I mean, they both want to be Hokage, and they both want to compete with each other. I mean, Hama wants to be, wants to surpass Naruto, as as Naruto wants to surpass Sasuke. They're a lot alike. Like, and that's one of the things I like about the uh, Konohamaru in a sense. Even though, though he's not in, in, in the series all the time, but it's like a, but he's a breath of fresh air. Understand, especially when you learn his ultimate destiny at the end of the manga. Right, if you guys watch the beginning of Naruto, then you understand. And then you got honestly, you probably read the ending. If you guys have not read the manga, go look it up. Like the manga is definitely nostalgic in a lot of ways. And then there's also Naruto Gaiden, which is basically continues after that, and like post tuning exam. But you get the point. But enough about that. Details of those. Sketchy, but either way, you, you understand what I'm saying, right? And Kodohamo, he wants to compete with Naruto. He allies, he wants to follow in his footsteps. And that makes for a good story. They both want to strive with each other. They want to uh, follow each They want to work together. They idolize each other. They want to compete with each other. And Kodohamo, he even though he's a small kid, and he hasn't, even though he's not endured as much as Naruto, he do have to go through his share of pain and grief. For example, he lost his grandpa. Oh, his grandpa, you know, Sarutobi, when Orochimaru attacked the village. Then there was his uncle Asuma. Uh, uh, like, Uncle Asuma, like, he cried. I mean, he lost two people he cared about who was a member of his family. 
And in fact, we don't even know a lot about Konohamaru's family. We don't even know who the heck his parents are. Uh, I never saw them in the anime, did you? Or the manga. I never saw Konohamaru's parents. Then the and in fact, the only other family other than we know of of the, that Konohamaru who has that's honestly still alive is Asuma and Gruenai's, you know, child. You know, his, their child, Asuri, who, uh, who's basically his cousin. And so basically, that little boy, to lead Kurenai's nice baby, like his little cousin, he has to watch out for that kid too, you know, because he's still a baby. He, when as when he was very young, he's still a baby. But I like the, I like I like this story because it shows how Gorohamaru over his life, over the, over the time since Naruto came back, he's been steadily improving himself, trying to follow in Naruto's footsteps, and that's one of the things I like about the story. Even though it's filler, and not a lot of people like fillers, it's a good story. Hey, if you guys are a fan of Naruto, you probably would like this. Even though it can, even though it didn't have a lot of action, it does have some funny moments which Naruto is known for. So basically, if you guys are a fan of Naruto, give this a shot, please. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. Comment right, thank you. This is Sullivan Alex. Gave a latest review to a Naruto Shibuden episode oh, 422 no, two, no, four, two, two and 423. Basically, that's all I got to say. It was a good episode. Good episodes. Double. Bye. <laughs> Crazy.